Time for another edition of the Big Ten Hockey Report. Rick Pizzo flanked by Paul Caponegri. Our focus, Minnesota and Penn State. Yeah. A pair of teams that have started to put all the ingredients together over the last few years, sure. Paul, to maybe start discussing a bit of a rivalry here inside the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, Rick, you got to love that. And, and who would have thought that this quickly with Penn State's program has built swiftly and Minnesota's come back a little bit, you might say, and I think it's made for some uh, tremendous games you saw that this weekend. Yeah, weekend series this past Friday and Saturday at Pagula Ice Arena. Take you to Friday night's game one, midway through the second period. Penn State on top, 1-0. Andrew Sturtz catches the pass for the breakaway and beautiful move. To beat Shearhorn, Penn State off to a two-goal lead early in the third. Same score, Vinny Letary forces the turnover. Letary doing the work and feeding Brent Gates, who beats Eamon McAdam in Minnesota. Down just one. Few minutes later, same score. Very similar play. Leon Bersted forces the turnover this time. And again, it's Gates finding the twine. Two crucial goals for Gates in the third, and we are tied up at two. To overtime we go in OT. Penn State finds a way. Vince Pedri from the point, all sorts of traffic in front through the legs of Shearhorn, and Penn State takes the first game in overtime, 3-2. To Saturday we go, and Minnesota would get revenge in a big way. Hudson Fashion coming on strong as of late, takes the feed from Justin Kluse, and Fashion goes top shelf where Grandma hides the good stuff. Minnesota leads 2-0 early in the third. It's 3-0 Gophers. Another Penn State turnover in the defensive zone. That's just sloppy, and Letary makes them pay. Minnesota on top, 4-0. Fashing not done. It's 5-0 Gophers. Minnesota would score three shorthanded goals in this game as they route Penn State 7-1 in game two to even up the series. Your pairwise rankings, in case you're unfamiliar with the pairwise, this is basically how the NCAA tournament field of 16 is set. If that field were set today, both Michigan and Penn State would be in the field. Minnesota right now on the outside looking in, but playing much, much better as of late. And of course, don't forget, Big Ten tournament back in St. Paul in March. Winner of that event gets the automatic bid to the NCAAs. Mentioned Hudson Fashion coming on as of late. Don Lucia has himself a very young team. Yep. Fashion is a guy who has been through the wars with Don Lucia, with this Gopher program, and he's been very, very consistent as of late. At least one point in seven of the last eight and four multi-point games during that stretch. Yeah, and you, you, you interviewed him last week. Their older guys got to step up. The Hudson Fashing, the Justin Clutes had a goal and three assists on Saturday. I, they're the key. You can rely on some freshmen for stuff here and there. Obviously, they're relying on a freshman goalie. But Hudson Fashing had two goals and assists all shorthanded on, on Saturday. Couple that, he had a couple breakaways on Friday shorthanded. So he's really took it on himself. You could see that he's like, especially on Saturday, he's like, this is my game. I'm going to make sure we do not get swept here at Penn State. We've discussed Penn State's rotating goaltenders. Guy Godowski yeah. told us just a few weeks ago, he goes back and forth with Eamon McAdam and Matthew right. Scoff because... Up until this past weekend, that rotation had been working extremely well. On Friday night, McAdam was terrific. Right. He stopped 40 of 42 in that overtime win. On Saturday, Scoff was not very good. Gives up right. six goals on just 31 shots. Are you still okay with this rotation, or do you think it's time for Guy Godowski to maybe settle on McAdam, who, to be fair, sure. has much better overall numbers? Sure, and it's, it's a tricky question because they haven't experienced it yet. They haven't put the other guy in the net the back-to-back -back back -back nights. So we don't know how they'd experience that, but coming off last week, I thought Amy McAdam was fantastic set Friday night. After they got the 2-0 lead, they kind of sat back and Minnesota started dictating the play, and even McAdam kind of helped them get to overtime, and Minnesota could have won that game. And then, of course, Saturday, you know, it was the Fashing and Clues show. I don't know if it would have mattered that day. So I think you'll, you'll see McAdam on Friday night, and I think if he plays well, I. I'd be hard-pressed to see Guy Godowski take him out of the net. Yeah, Penn State at home this week, and the Friday night game against Wisconsin can be seen right here on BTN. Wouldn't you know it? Paul Capinegri and yours truly on the call <laughs> Friday night. Michigan State and Minnesota comes away later Friday night on BTN+. And then on Saturday, the second game, 
from Pagula Ice Arena. No TV for that one. Michigan State and Minnesota. Game two on Saturday comes your way at 8.30 p.m. Thanks for watching another edition of the Big Ten Hockey Report. Check out our YouTube page, our Facebook page, and of course, BTN on Twitter as well as we re release more and more hockey reports throughout the course of the week.